What's Your Reel is a podcast where we interview with industry-leading creatives to learn who they are, how they got there, and where they want to be. We invite you to join us on the journey as we roll their reel to learn how these creatives are finding their way to success. Today, we're sitting down with an old buddy of mine, Jack Whitney. We went to high school together. Um, Jack has worked with all sorts of clients, You know, some being Burton, Ben & Jerry's, Cabot cheese, just some of the biggest brands, especially in Vermont. Um, but also, you know, Ben and Jerry's is a global brand. So, um, he works for a company called driven. He's a DP there and he's super talented. So this was a super fun conversation, just catching up, but also hearing his life story and how he got where he is, um, and where he wants to head. Jack likes to make cool things. He shoots, he edits, he directs. Now let's hear from Jack. Dude, what's freaking up, bro? Not a lot, honestly. I think it's been two years. Yeah, it's been... Since we even saw each other. A while, for sure. What the frick, man? Hey, you, you never reach out, dude. Oh, it's so that's <laughs> a me problem. <laughs> Way Wonderful. To be. Way Wonderful. To be. Dude, I've been wondering how much you would cost me to come work for me, but... Um, <laughs> Not as like a not as like a full time thing. I'm not gonna pull you away from your guys, but we gotta talk about that later. Okay. Would you do that? Do you do any? Do you still do projects outside of Driven? Yeah, when when time allows for it. Hmm. So like kind of a weekend thing or a night thing, but yeah. So um, you're but you're full time at Driven. Nine to five. Nine to five. How's that, dude? <laughs> it's good. I I like it a lot. It's like the schedule is good um the whole quarantine thing has like kind of flipped that upside down um but it's nice because we're all we're working from home and it's like as long as you get what you're supposed to get done then you're good to go that's nice yeah talk about that a little bit just how that's been working as a team or whatnot remotely yeah so we're it was kind of like we're all pretty nervous going into it just because like a lot of what we do is very collaborative. Um, but my boss brought a lot of the, he basically brought the studio into his basement. And so we were, um, he was able to film short, small things. Um, and then a lot of the clients we have reached out to like re edit a bunch of stuff. Um, so that kept us super busy uh, just repurposing old footage. And then with the slight new footage that would come in. Um, and then a lot of it was just prepping for when quarantine is over and we could really start <laughs> shooting again. Hmm. Did you guys get less busy, more busy or say the same? I think we stayed pretty, pretty even hmm. like the, Driven didn't lay anyone off, no furloughs. Everyone was allowed to stay on, which was awesome. Yeah, that's dope. Um, and we all definitely had work to do. Yeah. I have never been so busy. Really? As when quarantine started, yeah. Because, like, I do a ton of nonprofit stuff, especially with churches. And as soon as everybody had to go online, it was oh. like... It's Com called call cam bushy time. It was called <laughs> cam bushy time, which I'm super thankful for. But holy crap, dude. I'm like, for the first time, actually trying to plan a vacation, um, <laughs> which is incredibly hard to do right now. But that's yeah. OK. Um, but anyway, who are you, dude? Who are you right now? Uh, I am Jack Whitney living in Vermont. I work for Driven Studio. I'm a director of photography for them. And that's. That's kind of me. But you're probably an editor too, right? Honestly, I haven't touched an edit what? in <laughs> like probably since I, I've touched edits since graduation, but for the most part, shoot and hand off. It's awesome. Wait, wow, so cool. how are you doing that from home? <clears throat> so for me, I, there was one video that I edited um, but for the most part, I was just like concepting and creating treatments and that sort of thing just to stack up work for when we were allowed to get back in the studio. <laughs> what do you mean? So like, <laughs> like, um, so Ben and Jerry's is like one of our biggest clients. Um, and they, 
we'll have like we do stuff like monthly for them but like with quarantine they knew that we couldn't really shoot what we usually shoot so they would reach out and say that like oh we want this video this video this video for when um sorry my phone's ringing <laughs> um <laughs> for when you guys can shoot again so we were just like as a team taking their like brief fleshing it out for what we'd shoot and then like sending that back and forth with a client so that when the time was right, we could hop in the studio and shoot it. Hmm. Right on. Yeah. That sounds interesting. It's it, fun. Yeah. That's it's, cool. It's hard. Cause it's like you, like we as filmmakers like know what we want to do and like, to have to put all that into writing like this shot, this this shot for later. it's like <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to always portray your ideas like over hmm. a piece of paper with photos true so storyboarding yeah. yeah so that's been like a big learning experience for me yeah i was gonna say well that's funny because i was so i just recorded like a breakdown of the newest music video that's coming out on friday that we did and in it, I'm like, I hate storyboards and I don't even mess with them. I just work off shot lists. That's what I've always done. Okay, that's close. Yeah, no, I like, I do shot lists because you know when you get there, it ain't going to be the, you know. Yeah, like, right, right. right. You yeah, know, so. Drawing it out, it's not going to look like that. But I see how something with Ben and Jerry's, you could probably like plan it out very well. Beforehand. And so in a lot of the treatments that I do, it's not necessarily, like sometimes it's storyboarding because we do a lot of animation stuff and then you have to storyboard. Um but I, we have people for that. So like I can <laughs> send my ideas to them and they will, they're like graphic designers and they can draw like way, way better than I can. Um, but for a lot of the treatments that we do, it's like example imagery or like reference imagery. So like we write out kind of how the edit will play. And then we have some reference imagery that goes along with that to get, to give the client a picture of what the video might look like. Hmm. And then once they choose a concept or something, then we'll go in and do a shot list. And then that's kind of what we shoot off of. So preliminarily you're giving the client a storyboard or, or uh, an animated thing. Like explain to me what, what do they see? So the ones that I've been doing, it's like kind of like a two column thing where on the left side of the page, it's like, the video all written out and then on the right side, if it is going to be animation, um, we either like go to one of our, uh, graphic designers and kind of pitch them how we see the video coming together. And then they'll create some images, um, to like get the idea across. But for the most part, it's just like photos of, from either old videos or like mm. just a photo of a pint with a sunflower or whatnot. <laughs> and just to give the, the client an idea of, Oh, it's going to look like this. Hmm. And then, cause a lot of the stuff we do is like, we'll pitch multiple concepts. So they like, we want a new video for this new flavor. So then we'll go through and usually we like to do like three options for each video. So you could do one like this, that's all animated one like this or like that. Hmm. And so then from that, they'll choose which one they like best. And then we'll flesh it out a little more with an actual shot list. Yeah. But it's just kind of like a rough idea of what the video will look like. And then from that, they're able to make a decision. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Cause the people you're working with aren't necessarily photographers. That's why they're reaching out to you. So right. trying to portray that to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very important. <laughs> Dude. So what, I mean, you you guys work with, and, and again, uh, I really should be saving this for the end, but we'll jump back to the, you know, the beginning of your story here in a second. But, um, you guys work with some high caliber brands. Yeah. I mean, I just like, what is that like, dude? I mean, what is it like to deal with a brand like Ben and Jerry's or, um, I wish I could remember off the top of my head, who else you guys yeah, we do, do videos like for Ben and Jerry's seventh generations, oh, a yeah. big one Cabot, and then a whole bunch of others that I'm probably forgetting. But, <laughs> yeah, <that's okay. laughs> but yeah, like, so I want to, 
Do you guys do kind of clients all over the place or is it mostly just those big ones? So we have, we definitely have some clients that aren't Vermont based, but for the most part, our clients are Vermont based, but with like a regional, like they have that regional president presence or even global presence like Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. Um, so our clients are based in Vermont, but we get to travel all over the place, which is awesome. Sweet. Where yeah. have you gone? Um, <laughs> What's the coolest place? The coolest place I've been would be for, we did a video for Vermont bike tours. Okay. Which kind of a weird name, but they do tours like all over the world. Hmm. Um, so we filmed a video for them in France, Spain, and Portugal. That's sick. So yeah, we did a two week <laughs> road trip through Europe, which was awesome. That's, that's dope. That's probably the coolest place I've been. When was that? Mm, two years ago. I think it was my junior year. Dang, dude. That's college. an awesome opportunity. Yeah. That's sick. So let's jump back and talk about where all this started. Okay. In, in Jack Whitney's front yard filming snow skating. Mm-hmm. Where did it all start, dude? Uh, so... This was actually like my college essay. Okay. Um, well, you should be prepared but it, then. <laughs> but it all started. So in my, it was my freshman year of high school. I was supposed to go on a snowboard trip to Utah with Andrew Morin and his dad. And at that time I was doing like small snowboard competitions and ended up breaking my arm a week before the trip. And so I couldn't get a hard cast on in time. And it was also like a pretty severe break where like if I didn't baby it, then I would have to get surgery. I remember that. Um, that was a gnarly photo of yeah. your arm, dude. It was like literally a Z. Just so you know, it was like hand and then like a little bit of your arm was over here and then the rest of it was here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so... My mom actually, because I couldn't go, she felt horrible and gave, cause we got, we had like the trip insurance and I couldn't go cause of like a medical reason. So we got all the money back for the plane ticket. And so my mom gave me that money and I bought, um, a Canon T2i. <laughs> nice. Heck yeah, dude. And that's kind of where it all started. Before that I had like a GoPro. Um, but once like I got the T2I, then I really got into the whole filming thing. Dude, you gotta love the T2I. I, I still have it to this day. <laughs> you can't get rid of it. No. At this point you have to keep it. Yeah, no way. I have my, my 240p handy cam that <laughs> I'll just have forever. It's all scraped up for me dropping it at skate parks uh -huh. and stuff and whatever. I, but, I killed my first, uh, camcorder that i got in sixth grade oh boy uh we didn't have any spare batteries so dad like jerry rigged something up and told me to put the red wire on the whatever positive side <laughs> anyways i reversed him killed the camera oh crap dang, <laughs> dang it well you still oh, so i oh, took well. the whole thing apart because that's you know what you do when you're 12 or whatever <laughs> uh, whatever happens yeah um did you start shooting snowboarding first yeah it was Cause I got it and it was still, it was like mid winter or closer to like spring. Um, and so I had filmed like my brother was getting into rollerblading. So like I just did a bunch of like camera tests with him. And then as soon as I got my hard cast on, started going back to the mountain <laughs> and, uh, started to film a bunch of like the park crew guys at Bolton Valley. The who? The park crew, just like they like they're, so they're responsible for like making the terrain parks. Oh, I see. Okay, and that sort of right. thing. Gotcha. Interesting. The, the park. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we all start somewhere. <laughs> but okay, so this was you were a freshman in high school. Mm -hmm. I could have sworn you started earlier than that. I had like a, I was making some like GoPro stuff from probably for in like seventh grade. Yeah, but. Freshman year was like when I really dove in on iMovie. I assume, right? <laughs> of course, dude. Oh, oh well, actually, 
the whole like VT edits thing. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of yeah. referring to because you were with Jeremy right. making like biking videos. I forgot about that. So that was, yeah, like seventh, sixth, seventh grade. Okay, see, so that sounds more legit. Yeah. Okay, so you actually started no, way true. earlier than that. Yeah, so VT so, edits became a thing. Yeah, <laughs> I what's, remember what's VT edits. Okay, so, well, he can tell you, but <laughs> I was, if you were in sixth grade, how old are you in sixth grade? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Fresh, yeah. freshman year you get your permit right 15 yeah so sixth grade you're so like 12 13? 12 13 okay and you're how old now 23 okay <laughs> so yeah i would have been like 10 years old basically um i remember i thought vt edits was the coolest thing ever because i was i was buddies with jeremy right. and i really looked up to him because he was like on a bigger dirt bike than me to be honest mm-hmm. <laughs> so i just thought he was just awesome he had an 85 and i wanted one so bad um <laughs> but yeah tell us about what vt edits bro that's where yeah, it started no, man that, yeah wow how could i forget you left that about, out of the essay how could huh? I, yeah how could i forget about vt edits <laughs> um so yeah in like middle school like i got into the whole like youtube thing and was seeing like <laughs> a bunch of like small little video crews just making edits. Um, and so Jeremy's parents got like a camcorder for Christmas, I think, <laughs> or like somehow it may have been like a Costco deal or something, but like Jeremy's parents got a camcorder. So then we started taking the camcorder out all the time and filming mountain biking and like trampoline tricks right and so the tramp videos, yeah that's dude. where like i like at that age i like knew what i wanted to be making but like i couldn't make what i wanted so it was just like a like quality right wise. right yeah. or right. like this cool <clears throat> edit you know like i i was able to like watch a video and be like okay this is good like how can i try and do this so it was just a lot of experimenting mm-hmm. And like building dirt jumps and just shooting everything and then going into Jeremy's house with his family's iMac and editing, like sitting next to him in the chair with iMovie. (laughs) That's awesome, dude. That's so great. Okay, so now we can jump to high school now that we got that Uh out of the way because that's where it started, dude. And I remember watching those videos and I thought they were sick. You know, (laughs) meanwhile, we were making... I, it, that, that was the same time that I was making videos with that 240p handicam mm-hmm. in Roxio. And what the Roxio editing software would edit the video for you. You just dump the clips in <laughs> and it exports something. <laughs> and it's just like random dissolves at random points in the videos. Uh-huh. It was awesome. I was using Pinnacle Studio in middle school. Oh, I've never even heard I of heard that. I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I've heard of that. But, um, but yeah, so I thought VTN, it's like broke my world i was like oh my gosh yeah you gotta remember i was like 10 years old so we definitely portrayed ourselves like way cooler than we were like it was like (laughs) we had like our own secret trail that like all of our other it was like me jeremy and joey robertson and i forgot about that um everyone wanted to like come to the trails with us but like we could for some reason we kept it very exclusive and so I think that's at least for the kids that I was going to school with, like that's what made it such a cool thing. It was like a, <laughs> like a, was that Tanglewood? Yeah. Freaking right. And bro. then yeah. Flash for flash forward to getting a trespassing citation there. But <laughs> Hey, well <laughs> I was brought there by Jeremy. So now I feel a little bit special. Um, cause we were all in that mountain biking when we were kids. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys did all get <laughs> kicked out of there. Mm-hmm. That was a, yeah, that was fun. That was a time. Were you there for that? Yeah, so I wasn't even actually on the property. Like, this was years after it was, like, not really a thing anymore. Right. So, um, mind you, end of a neighborhood off a hiking trail. Okay, yeah. Basically, and off, so like, a walking trail. It was a public trail that we used as access, and then... There was like a professional mountain biker who had a whole huge line of jumps. Huge. I mean, and like then, bigger than 
probably upwards of six, seven feet. They were massive. Jeremy actually hit all of them. Did he really? Yeah. Holy crap. Um, Not bad. But so, yeah, we were like Jeremy was there with, I think, Zach and like maybe one of Zach's buddies. Um, and I was biking there and I had like the tripod in the backpack with the camera. And right as I'm about to like turn into the trail, there's like a cop just sitting right out at the front of the trail. And so I just like waved to him and like kept on biking because <laughs> if like that bike path goes like all the way to the Cirque and then yeah. you can kind of get into Lang Farm. So like I like biked by him and then he like waved me down. So I like turned around and had to go talk to him and like he was asking what I was doing and I just played dumb like, oh, I'm biking through the Lang Farm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but he was like, no, you're not like, knew <laughs> what I was doing. And meanwhile, the property owner, he like just bought the house and he was like a lawyer. Oh, wonderful. So I think he was just like kind of on his high horse, like trying to <laughs> make a presence. And he like locked everyone's bike to trees down there so that they <laughs> couldn't like leave to like wait for the cops to come. So then I like, cause the cop knew that I was like headed onto that property. He like wrote me a citation, which like, I didn't really know what that was at the time. Yeah. It was just like, okay, like don't call my parents. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as like, I'm leaving the guy comes out with like Jeremy and all them. And he starts like yelling, yelling at me, like trying to get up in my face. And then the cop was like, like, dude, like, he's I already talked to him he's fine like he actually wasn't <laughs> on the property like so i just like biked away oh um, you just left jeremy and Zach yeah. for dead. like i was like i'd already talked to the cop like i got in my citation so i just biked down the road traumatized enough yeah biked down the road and waited for them to get <laughs> all of their stuff and then we met up later and just went to a different trail but that was a an experience i hate people man yeah how Why old are you, are you? Like 14? It was, yeah, probably, it was probably like summer of eighth grade. I guess I hate people, yeah. man. <laughs> or no, it, may, have fun. it <laughs> might, it may have been, I think it was actually summer of freshman year. Oh, okay. Because I had the T2I. That's right, why I was right. going. And then we went to Saxon. Right. And I th made a little edit with Jeremy and like in the opening of the edit, he's on the phone with his dad, like talking about, the whole the citation yeah. situation yeah. that's hilarious <laughs> dude saxon's a classic bro yeah um <laughs> i love that story i remember that day though because you guys what sorry this is not important <laughs> to anything but i remember that day because you guys were talking about um or i was talking to jeremy and he's like oh yeah we're gonna go rebuild the jumps or whatever mm -hmm. you guys were digging that day yeah i was like oh sick can't wait to ride them afterwards or whatever and then all that happened <laughs> so lame yeah um anywho okay so <laughs> back to filmmaking so let's talk about prescott's class dude yeah um hsbn bro so freshman and sophomore year i was still playing football oh you played football yeah oh weird i didn't know that yeah qb out of boy <laughs> um <laughs> freshman qb <laughs> we went that's, undefeated that's what's up bro uh so yeah i was playing football and then like summer going into junior year or in so sophomore year i took like a movie one class and like started trying to get into the whole ehspn thing um but it was just like people filming the games and like voiceover um, but with football, I couldn't like help out that much. Um, and then summer going into junior year, I was just kind of like done with the football thing. Like I didn't really like the coach that much. Probably shouldn't say that, but it's um, okay. He's probably not and, there anymore. <laughs> and, and he probably doesn't remember you. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I was just like, I'm done. Um, so then I stopped playing sports and then I was like, kind of went all in to EHSPN that year. And it was like me and, K and Kale, we were kind of like running the show. 
Um, and we like took that into like a whole new direction, like wanted to actually film the games well, not like we're filming them for a game film. Um, so we started like shooting a little differently and then making all the edits to music, not like a voiceover saying like this person passes to this person. Um, is that what it was before then? Yeah, it was like, I didn't even know that. Yeah, it was um, a newscast. Yeah, it was a news show. Gotcha. Um, which like, like Herco was like one of the first. Oh yeah. So like they kind of started the whole thing and it was like a newscast and it was funny. Like before when they were doing it, they were like, there wasn't like any rules really. So they were doing like some, like they would do interviews and stuff and they would like talk about some pretty like controversial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like they asked Leo, the, the trainer, what his favorite STD was. Wow. <laughs> like, it, so okay. like that, like was like people got like started watching it because of that. Like it was kind of like, I, I'm pretty sure at one point it was also like televised, like in homeroom or whatever, oh, like gotcha. it would come on. Um, <laughs> but that kind of like got the school like backing it just cause like they were doing fun stuff that high yeah. schoolers thought was hilarious. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So they supported them. Right. And so then we kind of like took it in a whole new direction and then it kind of got to this thing where like people that were playing sports, like really wanted to be featured because like mm -hmm. the, the, the sports segments like made them look good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So they were like, that got the, all the athletes behind it. And then from there, it kind of just like turned into this like huge thing. Dude. I, I mean, every episode was like thousands of views. Which on, is on YouTube or what? On Vimeo. On Vimeo. Oh, geez. That's even, even harder. <laughs> <laughs> That's even harder. I mean, wow. Like, yeah, you just being turned into something sick. Yeah. We won a couple like Vermont. I think it was like technically a broadcasting type thing, but like hmm. won some awards hmm. for it all. I didn't know that. Dude, yeah. sick. Yeah. Good old Odessa. Yeah. That was <laughs> huge for us. When you signed with Odessa? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there was like this that was before they got big. Yeah. They were like somebody like SoundCloud people. Oh, wow. SoundCloud. And I, <laughs> it may have been like Tyler Mueller or someone that found them. Um, but they were like small and we just reached out and we're like, Hey, we're a school sports show. <laughs> Can we use your, like, cause before that Preska didn't want us to use any like copyrighted stuff. Sure. Yeah. So we reached out to like a couple artists that was like, electronic like fun like kind of dancey but not really just like a lot of beats that like made editing fun um so we like started using them and like making these crazy sports edits and that like really got the the school behind the whole show yeah kicked it up a notch yeah and then we started doing like these little skits and stuff like in between. Like, can we that, just talk about Colin like, for a while? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what do we have with Colin? We had like this between two ferns yeah. spinoff uh, that was like actually really funny. Um, we had this one segment called like Secrets of EHS. I remember. And that. so the school had just gotten a new like Canon camcorder that could do like nighttime yeah, yeah footage. Like the green. Yeah. 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 And so like we got the principal behind the whole thing. And so he basically gave us like full access to the school. So like we would go like under underground into like these tunnels and like <laughs> film in the halls at night and like make up these weird stories of like <laughs> what happens like behind the school walls. Yeah. And it was a series, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it, dude. And so That's that was awesome. a lot of fun. Like we were on the roof in these like underground tunnels, like in this weird attic. Yeah. That's the best, dude. It was a blast. EHSBN, man. I think, I think Phil, I think Prescott's class is the only thing that I actually remember from high school. Yeah. Or enjoyed. Right. I think. 
It was like the only, it was the only thing. No, I spent all my free time in the AV lab. Yeah. 100%. Dude, it was the best. It was the best. Matt Mansfield never had anything like that. We just, um, we had like a filmmaking class where we watched a couple of old classics and just like mm. analyzed them yeah. for lighting and the storyboard sort of deal. But like nothing with the camera, nothing broadcast, nothing creative. Yeah. yeah. Essex, we had like an unreal it was amount of gear. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I knew remember, Essex had a bunch. I was kind of wish we had like something like that. When the uh, Rokinon Cine lenses mm -hmm. came out, like we had just gotten a GH3. And so like before that, we were filming on like the GH3, I think, with like the 14 to 140, just like the kit lens. And then we got the full Rokinon Cine set with like a follow focus. And so, like, that night there was a soccer game. So I mounted, like, the Rokinon 85 onto the GH3 and, like, opened it all the way up. It was, like, hard as heck to shoot <laughs> yeah. the sports at 1.8. Yeah. But it, like, that was, like, not really, like, new. That was for, like, actual cinematic stuff, like, that's been around. But, like, for the sports show type stuff no one was really like shooting yeah, cinematic. Boundaries. Right. Yeah. So I remember we, we did that one day and then like from then on, it was pretty much shoot every single game on the 85 with the full wide focus open. <laughs> wide open. Dude, I love it. Dude, that, eight, that 85 was money. Yeah. I think it was sick. So yeah, I, I owe a lot to that lens. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Rokinon Cine set. I don't know if you've seen them. They're all they're the, they're, they're the size of like Canon L series lenses, right? Yeah. But they're all like 250 bucks. They're super affordable. Oh, wow. But they look amazing. And like Rokinon's Zine lenses, which is like their high quality, whatever. Um, it's the same glass, just with a different coating. And those cost like mm. 2,500 a piece. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're, you're getting the 80% the 80, 80 answer. Yeah. They're, right. the they were lens. awesome. And like when, probably when I graduated, I mean, we had like, I don't know how many GHs we had, but we had a ton of them. That's why you like them so much. Well, yeah, it's That's just like grew up with and they're mm -hmm. great. <laughs> and it's like that. And when I started working on my Mount Mansfield, that's what they had. Oh, yeah. And it was kind of, and we have three of them right here. <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of like the the durability of a cannon mm -hmm. where like a big battery that lasts for a while and like you can put the camera through hell. Yeah, but it like I've had mine for probably seven years like treat it like crap yeah and it still works as well as it did i know i've been through an immense amount of rain and all sorts of stuff with mine and it's kicking bro yeah are, like, are they fully sealed well i think they're splash proof maybe yeah, maybe right. so no but they seem to work yeah, fine yeah, still. yeah they're, <laughs> but they're it's, fairly it's crazy like even in the snowboard industry a lot of people are now shooting on reds, mm -hmm. but all their second cams are GH fives. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Dude. They're freaking awesome. Yeah. Like anyway, do they have the 29 minute cap? No, nope. that's oh, why we're using don't. them. They, they go don't. forever. Oh wow. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. They're money cameras. Like I actually just recommended a, a GH three to somebody who was on a budget and I was like, dude, this thing's great. What's their price point? Um, so the GH five S, which is like the cinema version. Yeah. I believe the body was two thousand. Okay. Say. So, so you can get a GH right. four for like twelve hundred bucks probably. Yeah. And they're amazing. Yeah. Four K everything. It says the GH five has four K sixty, which is nice. Yeah. But they're really sick. Uh the the downside is you basically have to buy a seven hundred dollar adapter <laughs> though with it. <laughs> adapter uh, to fit the lenses or what? To it's a micro four thirds sensor. Mm. So the, the, I'll pop a lens off after yeah. this. It's really small, um, which isn't great for low light, but honestly, it's kind of fine. Um, <laughs> it is fine. Uh, but if you get a, you get this seven or $800 adapter and it's a speed booster. So it has a piece of glass and it'll actually give you an extra stop on your mm. lens. So it take, it makes up for the, you and know, it also, cause the micro four thirds is like a two something crop. Yeah. But with the speed booster, it like opens up to a one point six i think which is like a canon t2i yeah yeah like an aps-c sensor like you have uh -huh. i don't think yours is full frame no it's not no, yeah i'm running the 90d right now yeah so you don't get full frame but you get aps-c which is what you're used to so. yeah um 
Dude, what great cameras. Yeah. High school, man. Mm-hmm. All right, bro. <laughs> it's 50 time. <laughs> this is where uh, this is where your boy Cam come into, comes into play. The 50-hour film. And the 50-hour film contest. You used to go and watch those. No. I, I was part of it, man. <laughs> oh, you were in it? Come on. Seriously? There was one poster hung up in Mount Mansfield for the 50-hour film con- contest. And I'm like, I want in on that. You did? Because it was hosted by Essex. Yeah, I did two, three of them. I literally did not know that. Yeah. Well, well now I feel cause bad. Because the <laughs> my level quality was yeah. here without a film class. Cam yeah, was, right. was too busy winning all of them. Yeah. So. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I came to the premieres and was like, wow, yeah, Essex is superb. Dude. But I had fun shooting them. Literally. Oh, they're a blast. The 50 are super fun. Oh, bro. The amount of stories. Uh, we, got, we got to fill in the audience, though. So what what is yeah. 50 hour film? Well, okay, I can explain it. 50 hour film contest put on by Essex High School. It's for high school students in Vermont. And basically, you get a prompt on Friday, Friday after school or whatever. Five o'clock. And then you got to submit a short film by Sunday, you know, or like by Monday morning, basically. Yeah. I don't think we ever did it in 50 hours, but um, not quite. (laughs) (laughs) But that's okay. But yeah, so you would get a prompt with a character that you have to put in it. Yep. A genre. Um, five, you get 10 lines, like dialogue lines. You have to put five of them in there. Yeah. Yep. Um, and a couple of props mm-hmm. and, a, and a prop. Yeah. So our first one was like my, one of my favorite videos <laughs> I've ever worked on. <laughs> I mean, to this day, dude, like, and we're sitting right across from agent swap or whatever we called you, <laughs> like, uh-huh. dude, that was an epic weekend. That first one. Yeah, that first one was crazy because it was like we got the prompt and we like there was a fall sports party <laughs> happening at Jeremy's house right down the road. Oh, really? I didn't know it was at Jeremy's house. You, you remember we like all left? Yeah, I remember. Right? I yeah. know you guys went to a party and you left Sean and I here, but I, like, and you were trying to be all discreet about it. Like we didn't know what you guys were doing because um, you guys were all seniors. Everyone was juniors. Oh, you guys were wait. Ju- oh yeah, no, you were. You were a junior. Is because is there? Is it spring and fall? Yeah, it's spring and fall. But no. I, so then we were seniors because we only did two. Okay, so you guys were all we're, seniors, yeah. and then Sean and I were juniors, mm-hmm. the only juniors on the team. So you guys all blast off, and we're like, okay. <laughs> and yeah, thankfully, was, we had it written that time by Friday night. Yeah. What we had yeah, like a rough. The plan. We had like yeah. a rough, a rough script. Yeah. And like, I think a lot of us were just like trying to get get <laughs> to this party. So we like just cranked through it. And yeah. then like, it was like the perfect cover for us. Cause we were at Cam's house for oh <laughs> nice <laughs> the 50 hour film festival. Um, <laughs> and just went over to Jeremy's house, wow. partied and then woke up super early, came back. And then I think we had to like, we definitely had some script changes that morning oh yeah and then had to like like round up all of the guns and like (laughs) was that that the The first thing that we shot was that the storage container the first thing we shot was down at the dock down oh yeah because we got kicked out after we got the shot. Right. If you remember that, because you were smoking in front of the non uh, with a butt that we found on the ground. Yeah. Oh, oh. No. It was, I didn't actually smoke it, but it was just like, we had actually yeah, just turned it. 18. It. So it was like, we could have yeah. bought. Well, I, I remember, I, I remember Minnow couldn't have, and we had him smoking a cigar outside. Yeah. Of- <laughs> um, but so, yeah, we found like, it was a pretty full cigarette and just kind of like, <laughs> lit it picked it up and like had just had to get that one shot with it yeah so like it served its purpose we got it and then we got kicked out funny um and then did we so we did all the stuff in burlington did we go up to the parking garage next so what do we do because this is my favorite story from the 50 i i don't know how like burlington police didn't show up and and like arrest us yeah so Um, like (laughs) like like really arrest us I don't know if we did that in that, like. I can't remember the order of things. Yeah. I mean, so it was no sleep. Basically, like, everyone in the crew riled up all of the airsoft guns that everyone had. No, it was it was just 
What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? John. Burton. Yeah, yeah, it may have just been John. Burton. John Burton like had a like million airsoft, airsoft guns. guns. <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> and so one of them was like, like a pretty like may have been like a pellet gun type thing. Like it was looked like a bolt action rifle. Like looked just like, like a real gun. Yeah. And we went on to the top of this parking garage, downtown Burlington. <laughs> um, and like, we filmed a couple shots of like Colin trying to get out of the car and like grab the gun to like, cause the whole plot was like this assassin that was not, it was like pink Panther esque, like oh, this yeah. assassin that was really, really bad at what he does, but like somehow gets it done. So it was like we went through all these scenarios of like him with his target trying to kill him but missing. And so one of them was on the top of this parking garage and like Colin goes in to the car, like pulls out the gun and like literally hanging the gun off the top of the parking garage. (laughs) Aimed at Burlington Street. And then (laughs) we had, I remember like we were, kind of knew that it wasn't okay so like we got (laughs) the gunshots and like put the guns away and then sean simonetti had like this insane old old lens that was like a 350 mil or something (laughs) and so we used that as like the scope and i remember cam (laughs) was actually (laughs) i got shot yeah Yeah. because it was the target walking by and colin fired but missed the target because he sneezed yeah and hit cam (laughs) and so Cam, we're shooting, and Cam like all of a sudden just drops to the ground on the on the on the, <laughs> on the sidewalk. sidewalk, like yeah. right in downtown Burlington, <laughs> and like this woman, like it I'm surprised you remember her, this. It scares her half to death, and she's like, "You guys cannot be doing this." Like I thought he, yeah, got because shot. I fell and like, got right back up when we were done. Right. Yeah, right. And she's that, like, "Are you freaking cut. kidding me?" She's in her car driving driving past. She's like, she's like, "Are you like that? Isn't funny? Like all this stuff?" And we're like. Just shooting yeah. a film, lady. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. And then, yeah, and then we had, like, the handgun right out in front of, like, what was that, AJ's kitchen? Okay, wait, before we get there, like, before we get there, I have to tell this story, and I can take it out if you want me to, but it's way too freaking funny not to put it in there. The top of the parking garage, your, your party came back to bite you. Do you remember that? Because you peed in the corner for, like, five and a half minutes, dude. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I remember that. No, yeah, because <laughs> it was cause, so no, we funny. came we came back from the, the party and like jumped into the script, like went into Burlington. Here we go. And we had not peed. <laughs> and so I'm like in the corner of the parking garage and I have to piss so bad. And like, we're on the top of I the, thought, Yeah, I thought I was gonna explode. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, I'm just gonna have to do it. Like I gotta do it. <laughs> and like expecting it to be like a little quick thing. <laughs> Five minutes later, like <laughs> still peeing in the corner of this parking lot. No, like, I just remember this might be too much information, but I just remember we we all kind of like lined up in case somebody came because yeah. we were kind of expecting a cop to show up. Because one, it's like people don't like you hanging out on parking garages, especially yeah, you're, not you're with loitering. guns. Yeah, especially not with guns, right? So, and what time of day was that? Middle oh, this of the was day. noon. <laughs> so <laughs> noon on a Saturday. So we were like we were up there, and I just remember. Minnow's just like, oh no, you just cut it off. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, you know, he definitely said something and it was just like I had to stop the stream <laughs> just in case. And then it wasn't anything. I just remember that being the funniest <laughs> moment of the day. <laughs> it was just like oh, I, I totally like, forgot about that. I did I still tell <clears> the story, <throat> dude. Sorry. Um anywho, okay. So then yeah, then we we go into Essex at the five corners and we have a handgun. And uh, do you remember the woman who rounded the corner? No. So when you, you were shooting it Uh huh. and Nick comes out and is like putting the thing to go and shoot, you know, middle in the back of the head. And this lady comes around the corner and like bolted the other direction because <laughs> he was right when he was like raising the gun up. I don't know. Dude, I don't know how we did it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how we didn't all like end up in jail. <laughs> Like, I don't know how we did it. Because the night before, we took all the orange tips yeah, off. which is very illegal. So we wanted, because we wanted them to look good. I don't know, man. That was a heck of a weekend. But, yeah, then uh, edited our lives away Sunday. Mm-hmm. And we did it. And it was so, like, 
That's an epic video. I don't know if you've watched it recently. No, yeah. Did you I, get an award for that one? Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we first, never lost. First place. <laughs> <laughs> we won first every time we did it. Um, of course. But it was just... It was just Oh my, it's still epic. It's still and like, Colin is hilarious. It's still man. very funny. Like even from an outsider's perspective. Yeah. Like not knowing the cast, like it is a funny film. It was just perfect. And then we shot in my parents' office for a bunch of it. Mm hmm Um and he <laughs> broke the outlet. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like you wouldn't quit laughing when you fell to the ground. Uh, see, this one makes sense for anybody who hasn't seen it, but there was a scene where you like, you were like the robber, right? And, oh, and yeah. you, and you go and trip and then Colin comes out of the bathroom with his pants down and then shoots you like you, like he got him, but he's not good at what he does, you know? So it's like the whole, the whole plot well, is like no, he did I it by accident. I don't even know if he shot me. It was just like, I was on the ground and yeah. he like happened to stumble yeah, upon but, me. Uh, you tripped, you tripped and fell like hard so many times, but every time he opened the door, he started laughing. So we had to do it over and over and over again. Um, well, yeah. And then there's, there was like the storage unit scene. Oh, that was, where epic. It was like Colin, the, the hit man was like going into his locker to like get all of his guns. And like, we didn't, we honestly didn't have like a shot list at all for this whole no, entire film. And we like didn't really know what to do. So we just kind of like Colin's pretty good at improv. So we just kind of like had him walk in and like we told him to try and put every single gun into like a small duffel bag. And so I think we did one take and it was like him like putting all these handguns in some like random bomb looking things. Yeah. We, and then, we filled a Ziploc bag with sand and put yeah. wires around. It. <laughs> and then he, there was like a shot of him, like trying to put like a full rifle into this bag, like has his feet out, like trying to stretch the bag, like shove it in. And like, if you watch the video, like to this day, you can like hear us all of us just giggling in the background. <laughs> no, but like, Cause it was all improv and he, he just yosses the bag out the door and all of us who are in the little room behind the camera just start dying. Cause it, I think it was just you and an audio guy. I remember I was outside just laughing my butt off and like he walks out just carrying all the, Oh my gosh, dude, what a freaking great short film, bro. That's still like, Oh, that's one of the best things ever. Yeah. That's one of the best. That's like one of my favorite videos that I think I've ever been a part of. To this day, one hundred percent. So anyway, I don't know why we talked about that, but we we, <laughs> we won that contest, and then we did it again in the spring, and then um, that one was terrible, but we still won. We still won. It was horrible. It was really bad, and that one we like didn't have a script until noon on Saturday. Yeah, it was. If you remember that, it was really bad. And Sean was sick, and just oh, oh dude, yeah, I forgot about. It that. was a disaster. <laughs> and then all John Burton wanted to do was like a kidnapping. Remember that? And like I he wanted to be shoved that. into the back of some car. <laughs> he just kept asking. And that's all. He wouldn't let anything else fly. It's just like, I want to do a kidnapping. Oh, do you remember the scene we uh, for our first 50 that we shot in your garage? With oh, the two girls oh, on the yeah. ladder? <laughs> wow, dude. I that We need to go watch that again. What a great video. Yeah, we had... It was Ashley Claude and Christina Tejas. And basically we had like Colin in his like garage, like working out. So he was bench pressing a ladder and then a girl was sitting on each end of the ladder. <laughs> I think I remember that. So it was like four of us on each end, like <laughs> trying to like make it look like an actual. And it freaking worked. It People were work. like, how did you do that? Yeah. Cause it actually looked like he was just benching. It was amazing, dude. Yeah. Um, we had like, we found like a Budweiser bottle. Yeah. In my garage that we like filled with water. <laughs> it's like 18. <laughs> like, it was just perfect. I mean, oh, it was amazing. Anyway, um, but I find, so here's the interesting thing. I don't know about you. A lot of my projects look like that weekend <laughs> still, <laughs> like low key. <laughs> like they're very much like you just show up and, and deal Figure with what out. you get, right. you know? Which I find it interesting because it sounds like everything you do is so like precise now. Um, it yeah, it definitely like working for a company now. It is much more precise, which is awesome. 
Mm. Like if I was doing that alone, I definitely couldn't have it that precise, but with like working with a team and everything, it makes just production go that much smoother. Yeah. Anyway, you wrap up high school Mm -hmm. and you decide to go to college. Yeah. I went to uh, Champlain college for film for film. Um, I was going to go to Montana state for film. Okay. Cause that was the the cheapest option. Mm. And then my mom actually got a job at Champlain two days before I had to make my college decision. Mm. And so that came with free tuition (laughs) and it was Champlain was my top choice. It's just, I like did not want to be in any sort of debt. Mm. Right. Um, so went to Champlain. Champlain's uh, expensive, people. Yeah. It's nice really private expensive. school. <laughs> Just for reference, but continue. <laughs> um, and that, like, if it weren't for Champlain, I definitely would not be where I am today. Not necessarily in terms of classes and learning, but in terms of, like, the connections I made through... Champlain alumni and like upperclassmen while I was in school Hmm. that like 100% got me to where I am today. Hmm. Interesting. So did that lead you to driven? Yes. So so what's what's that story? My, so my freshman year, um, Champlain has like a ski and ride club that it was like similar to VT edits where it was like a friend group that was like, very hard to like infiltrate like most of Champlain hated ski and ride because (laughs) it was like an exclusive thing. Um, but my freshman year they, they always host a rail jam. So I just, I like contacted them just saying, I want to film the rail jam. And so that got me like, I started filming, I filmed that and then like went to this like after party with that whole crew and like hit it off with them. So that, um, like got me into that crew. And at the time the president was this guy, Peter Cirilli, who's like this big Vermont photographer. Yeah. Um, and he was interning or I don't know if it was interning or working at driven, but he wanted to shoot, or like he was doing freelance work for zero gravity beer and wanted my help just like on a shoot. So I helped him shoot some video for it. And then like a couple months down the road, driven was just looking for like a PA an extra set on an extra set of hands. And so Peter like suggested me and then the actual, like the two owners of driven actually, are Champlain alumni, as long as most of the people <laughs> that work there. Oh, um, interesting. But so I helped them out on a Ben and Jerry's recipe shoot and like everything went smoothly, kind of hit it off with the, the one of the owners, Joe. Um, and so through sc- for the rest of that year, I was kind of just doing um, some, just helping them out on set when, my schedule allowed. And then when they needed help, um, and then they were looking for an intern. So I reached out and applied for the internship and then got that my sophomore year. And I've been at driven ever since. Dang. Yeah. That's how it's done, bro. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. W- when you were interning there, mm-hmm. how long did you intern there? I was, Technically an intern until, uh, May of 2019. Oh, wow. Um, definitely was doing more than intern duties. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, that, that's but that was what my, interns yeah. do. But that was, that was my title. <laughs> hmm. You don't get called intern anymore though. Nope. Okay. <laughs> and I never really was called the intern there actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which was nice. So, dude, I remember when you first started working there, like you were doing a lot. I don't know why I remember this, but I remember you telling me like, dude, the way they log footage is crazy. Oh, that actually may have been 
So in high school, I interned for Burton. Oh, that was Burton. 100%. It was, it was Burton who like does a next level logging. Yeah. Because of all their different riders and stuff. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. And they're like ESPN or who knows what will reach out and be like, Hey, we need clips of Sean White or Kelly Clark, Danny Davis. So then like part of my intern duty was like to just search through that in the premiere projects. And then I could pull all of those clips yeah yeah and so that like made it was a new process for me at the time like i never thought about sorting footage but it made the editing process a whole lot easier because for them it's like you have the winter season when they're shooting and then a lot of their stuff comes out in the fall or even the summer Mm -hmm. so it's not like a direct shoot to edit thing so when the footage sits for a while if you log it, it makes the editor's life so are, that much easier. Are you uh, adding metadata or are you just yeah, sorting just in, clips into different folders? In Premiere, just adding like tagging. Notes. And yeah, tags. exactly. Oh, you were doing metadata stuff too. Yeah. Oh, that's a grind. I had to do that as an intern too. And it was It was a grind. <laughs> it was like, I kind of liked it. Did you? Just because it was like, it was very satisfying to like have this huge bin of clips you could search and, and then areas. and then at the end of it it's like super organized interesting so i, I kind of like that interesting yeah i've never really liked editing so Me it's either. hard it's yeah I, <laughs> I, so i'm unfamiliar with that and then so do all these projects work out of the same premiere project or is that just saving metadata to the clips that other projects would reference so they we'd have like a premiere project for each actual project and mm-hmm. then import that into a larger project. Okay. So then you could open that larger project. Um, and then it would show you which you could import sequences and whatnot exactly. from other projects. Interesting. You still doing premiere at driven? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah, dude. <laughs> Lifesaver. I'm so glad that's like the standard now. I remember when I first went to Mansfield, it was avid. Oh, yikes. Avid is the dumbest program I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. And it's the quote unquote industry standard. It is. It's god awful. Oh, yeah. My. It's the worst editing program I've ever used. My uncle is like a writer for like investigative discovery channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went, I visited him for a week and just like helped out on set and like was in the editing bay. And they are all on Avid. It looked like a whole different language is insane have you ever used it no don't ever do it yeah it's terrible i Just literally don't know how at, they make films on it yeah looking at it was like it, it's not intuitive at all no hmm. and and it only takes a certain file type so you have to convert all of your clips <laughs> to just get it in the program. Yeah. What a joke. Premiere Pro will take anything. I know. It's absurd. <laughs> well, yeah. that, that's like Final Cut used to only yeah, take. Final Cut was the same the one. The ProRes. MPEG Stream Clip, dude. That's mm-hmm. a lifesaver. Did you ever use that? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah, man. The T2 high footage wouldn't make it in otherwise. <laughs> Wait, you started on Final Cut too? I started on Final Cut 10. Oh, okay. So I not 7. Yeah. Because it was much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I didn't have to do that, but knew of all the people going through that process. Hmm. Yep. No, I was, I was given a Final Cut 7 license. Final Cut Studio 7, dude. Fun. It was a good time making all of my scootering edits yep. in Final Cut 7. <laughs> but anyway, so um, yeah, where should we go from here? I'm at a stalemate. What you got? I don't know. I started with Premiere, like it was Essentials or something like that. No, oh, I just had the word. It slipped out of me. It slipped Premier away from Essentials. Me. Yeah, no. It was like before the CS. Um, elements? Premiere Elements? Was I that no it? I have no idea. I th- so elements that was and ago. Essentials both sound correct. Yeah, because I think, <laughs> I think Elements was like before the CS series. So that's when you could like buy the CD mm. and own it versus the other one was like it updated annually. Sold. So you were the action sports guy always. Mm-hmm. Especially when you started interning for Burton, because I kind of forgot about that. But I remember now at the time I was like, oh, yeah, he's just going to work for Burton forever because you're the action sports guy. You always were. You were the king of VHSPN, like shooting all the games. And now you're shooting pints of ice cream. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> so like, w- so a couple questions. Yep. One, how's that happen? And two, where are you at with action sports versus anything else? Um, so I kind of got in like to get into the commercial world. It's like, yeah, you can, you want to shoot for North face. You want to shoot for Burton, like all this stuff, but there's, unless you're doing huge projects for like Patagonia or North face, there's really not much money in the outdoor industry. Um, so that's what kind of shifted me to this, like business, the more business side of the commercial industry, I guess Hmm. the non action sports side. Um, but like with, I feel like with any film studio, like they might be putting out all this work for this cool new fishing company or this cool new tent company but they're always also doing a lot of work on the side that they might not be promoting Hmm. that like that's where the money is. So like if you have like a production studio, you're going to have to always take in these clients that you might not want to do work for, but it's going to be steady money. Luckily with driven, that's not really the case. Mm-hmm. Like all the work that we do is super fun and like you can actually make some interesting stuff, but a lot of other companies, like a couple, um, this one Burlington production house was like, got it start making small ski movies and then did some like eventually shifted into the music video industry. But at the time they were only putting out like these awesome ski videos And so like, I thought that that's how they were making their money, but on the side they were doing like a bunch of makeup product (laughs) videos and like that sort of thing that they just weren't promoting. And so after talking to a bunch of people about like running your own production house, it's like you, it takes a lot to get to a level where you can own, where you can pick and choose those really cool clients Mm-hmm. Like for the most part, you have to do this work for other companies that you may, that's not your pride and joy, but you're always going to have those types of clients that pay the bills. Yeah. Did you think you would be working for a film studio? Like when you were coming up? I knew that I wanted to. Hmm. Like, I don't think that I have the business background at least right now to like run my own sort of thing. Like I could do a bunch of like freelance stuff. Um, but I think I ideally wanted to like have a crew that I could work with and like have a studio or a space to do that in. Mm -hmm. And so I like, as of right now, I definitely am not like comfortable branching out and like doing that on my own. Mm -hmm. And so like, I wanted to find like work for a studio where I could shoot for them and just operate under them. Yeah. And we don't have to go here if you don't want to, because I know you're employed. Um, but do you ever, I mean, it sounds like right now you're, you're where you're supposed to be. Um, But yeah, do you ever think about what it would be like to you being a DP, I'm assuming you're not in the finding client side or whatever. Correct. So you just do the DP. Right. Hmm. But I think like in a perfect world, like at driven, I could keep growing and kind of start like branching out maybe a little bit into that outdoor like action sport type industry hmm. and like take like, cause that's ideally where I want to go. But I know that it's like, it's very, very hard to make it in that side of film. Yeah. Would you be able to bring in 
clients to driven in that realm? Yeah, I think like right now, I think I definitely like if some, if I knew someone that works somewhere and they wanted video, like I could definitely like create that intro between driven. Yeah. Well, there's your end dude. Right. The way I see it anyway. Yeah. Um, that could be a great step in the right direction. How much stuff are you doing on your own? Not a lot. Nothing. I don't have much time for it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also haven't been trying, like I haven't been like marketing myself at all. So I've kind of just like, I'm enjoying what I do at driven. Um, so I'm just, um, that's where I'm, where I am now. Yeah. You mentioned if you wanted to do more side projects, uh, you would market yourself more right now. You're not really marketing yourself cause you're, you're busy and your full-time job and you're liking that. Um, if you wanted to do more side gigs, how would you go about marketing yourself? That is a great question. Um, I think a lot of what I would do is like just reach. Cause I have a lot of, not really a lot. One photographer <laughs> friend, Peter, um, who does like a lot of photo stuff and then he will like be on other projects with like other random video people. So I think that would be my go-to route, at least to begin with is like to reach out to him to offer Mm -hmm. the video side of things. And then once having like the, um, like that kind of intro and like working with a couple clients, I feel like most of it is just word of mouth. So like, Oh, someone works here. I did a video project with him and then he left to go to this place. I think like, I don't know how much like actual marketing I would do, whether that's like Facebook or Instagram, but I would just definitely start reaching out to either old contacts or past clients to like see if they need any video work and then kind of go through that. Um, hopefully through that word of mouth route, which is not reliable or Um, consistent. Right. But I've, it's worked well for a couple of people I know. I was going to say, I would argue it's probably one of the only ways to do it. It's the best, but yeah, it's, it's not a quick path to There's nothing (laughs) that you can really do on your end besides doing like, great work yeah you can't really like you you have to rely on other people for a recommendation which is awesome but it's like not the most yeah. reliable thing so dude you're still in vermont yeah is this a choice like a choice to yeah. stay yeah so you like vermont i love vermont heck yeah man i have no reason to leave Oh, hallelujah. You're some kind of guy. Dude, literally. <laughs> okay, because, you know, in high school, it drives me crazy how everybody's like, to be a filmmaker, you have to leave. Like, what has your experience been? You know, because... Great question. It's one of those things, dude. Like, yeah. Because I thought it. I, my plan after yeah. high school was to move to Colorado. I don't know if you knew that or not. No. So my plan was to move to Colorado. And when oh. I decided not to go to school, I was like... Kip and I were going to go because <laughs> Kip was going to do his bike mechanic thing because Colorado and I was going to go right. make videos in Colorado. I'm so glad I didn't do that because <laughs> I love it here. Um, but everybody thinks that you can't make it. Tell me about that. You're still here, dude. I'd say they're wrong for sure. Cause the one thing about like, yeah, you could move to LA, you could move to New York, but you're going to spend six, seven years working as a PA on a film, you know, and it's like, and you might know someone that can get you like that next step up to like maybe a seeing or like moving a tripod for someone. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I know that was Kale's experience. Like he, when he went out to, I forgot he when went he out went out to, to California, Angeles. he was like doing some PA stuff and like, I don't know if he really liked it that much or he, I know he didn't like it. I don't know really why, but I know that he told me he was like, he just saw this like reoccurring image of him just like floating 
as that entry level person mm-hmm. out there. And so I think, yeah, you can go out there and you, you can make a name for yourself. You can work your way up and get to where you want to be, but it's all about connections. And so for me, I know way more people in Vermont than I know in any other state. So it's like, it goes back to that word of mouth thing where I feel like the the place where you have the most connections is the place you're going to be the most successful. It makes sense. you know, and you went to film school here in Burlington, so they had connections in Burlington, which, you know, exactly kept, kept that going. Yeah. What I always tell people is like, I love making videos anywhere, but I love living in Vermont. Exactly. Like you can get to this point where you are based in Vermont, Mm -hmm. but you're traveling all over the place to do work. Dude, I can't, I don't get jobs here. I don't know if I've (laughs) talked to you about this. No, I don't know. I mean, I, I like do some freelance stuff for Mount Mansfield, but yeah, I don't, I have a project here right now, but this is my first one. I think since I started. It's funny though, because like <clears throat> I'm into a lot of, um, landscape type photography stuff and I've traveled quite a bit across the U S and like Vermont is so pretty compared to yeah. the yeah. South or the West. Yeah. Like it's, it's just boring out there, yeah. you know? And it's like, I live in such a beautiful area. So yeah, it's one of those things where Los Angeles is awesome, but well, Los Angeles isn't awesome. <laughs> LA is <laughs> dumb, but like California, <laughs> California is awesome. But Careful. You're going to lose listeners. I could never live there. <laughs> You know, it's like, yeah. I love going there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe not now, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I can, nobody's going anywhere. I can never live there. And so, yeah, but my problem is that nobody can afford me here. <laughs> I like charge too much, um, in Vermont. Right. Which is a very, that's a real worrisome, problem. Yeah. But because I feel like in Vermont, there's so many small businesses mm-hmm. that it's like perfect for you to start kind of getting clients yeah. in like getting into the scene that way, but it's hard. One, it's hard to know what you're worth. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Like how to mark, like what to market yourself as for, in terms of like a price point, Mm -hmm. um, which is terrifying. Um, but it is tough where like a lot of people in Vermont don't think that like, the video or photo side of their business would like do that much for them. So I feel like it's, it's hard. I feel like to make it in Vermont, you have to get in at a lower level Mm -hmm. and like start building clients for prices that you aren't really happy with. Yeah. But then once you get a good relationship with them, you can like express to them, how you could do this better or you could take this project to the next level. And I think that's the way that you get to where you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you got studios like driven and you guys own the big guys basically in Vermont. I mean, when you talk about Cabot and Ben and Jerry's, those are probably the biggest ones that we have. I, I, I think one of, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a few, there's a few production companies that handle the big, yeah. clients that's for sure right um and some still don't even want to pay because there's no there's no scene there's no film scene basically there yeah there really there's isn't. no union <laughs> so there's no bottom line you have people coming out of high school like you and i at one point who are charging 200 dollars for a video that we probably could have made thousands off of mm-hmm. um but yeah i mean as far as vermont goes that's the one hard part but it's great to be based out of here and work everywhere yeah And I feel like everyone that leaves always comes back. Yeah. I just skipped a step. (laughs) And so did you. Like this one, I I, I literally talk about this all the time. I'm like, everyone who leaves comes back. Yeah. So it's like, why, why just, just skip the step. Save the time and the money. Yeah, exactly. Just stay here in the first place. You're not going to be here eventually. But, um, (laughs) but where is filmmaking brought you? Outside of Vermont. Outside of Vermont. Um, been to California, uh, Mississippi, Montana, Florida, uh, I have that Montana song stuck in my head now, uh, Georgia, 
And then, yeah, Europe, France, Spain, and Portugal. So, based out of Vermont, <laughs> yeah, definitely had a wide range of locations. Yeah, it's epic, right? Yeah, um, not bad for twenty three. No, <laughs> not bad at all. So no dude, complaints. And dude, tell us about your uh, trip out to France, Portugal, and Spain. Yeah, so that was for this company, Vermont Bike Tours. So they're just a Vermont-based um, bike okay, tour. Okay, hold on. One, because that's beeping. And two, we didn't talk about this on the podcast, did we? I can't remember. I Were we recording? Was before... Was that before recording? I can no? just do a little, a short snippet. Yeah, just talk about it. <laughs> um, I feel like we talked about it on here. Maybe we did. We Screw can skip it. it. Well, let's just talk about the... Uh, you brought up... An, uh, do you see fishing something? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, it was actually... So, with school, a lot of the stuff that I did was during school. And so, I basically had to, like, email all my professors... And be like, hey, I need to like, I'm going on a two week work trip to Europe or I went on a two week trip uh, on this shark fishing boat called O-Search. And so they used to have like this show on Discovery where they, their whole thing is they're, they just tag sharks, mostly great whites because there really isn't much info about them hmm. so they tag them they catch them tag them so that they can track their like movements migration patterns all that type of stuff um so i went on a two-week shark fishing expedition um it was a big boat that used to be on deadliest catch that they transformed into this shark fishing vessel and so i spent two weeks out at sea we touched land twice, I think, because <laughs> it was like a rainy, crappy day. So we just went to the local bar from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. <laughs> um, but we spent two weeks off the coast of Florida and then up off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina um, just fishing for great white sharks. And so I was like an editor on that expedition, if you will. And every day they have like the big boat that everyone stays on and they have like this big crane platform that comes off out into the water that they load the sharks onto and then lift them slightly up out of the water to do all their research stuff. Um, but I was just part of a team to document all the, like the whole process of them catching the sharks, tagging all the research stuff they did, and then setting them free. So with that, a um, couple questions. Were they just like tagging them? Can they track them or is it they're putting a tag on it and they hope they see it again and then they can find it later? Right. So they have, they put a tag on their dorsal fin that will transmit for, I think, two or three years. Cool. So they'll tag it let it go. And then usually it takes like, um, a couple of weeks or so and they'll get their first ping and then they can travel. Like they track them basically like it was new knowledge to them that they go all the way up to Nova Scotia. <laughs> oh wow! So they can track basically all their movements of like wow. when they're down South, when they go up to Nova Scotia, when they're mating, all that stuff. So it was like pretty crazy to see like a 18 foot great white, shark right up next to you yeah that's nuts that's freaking sick dude yeah so what's the uh where you do the pre-planned studio ben and jerry stuff mm -hmm. and then you go on boats and film with great white sharks do you love them both in the same or do you prefer the sharks <laughs> <laughs> the the sharks is definitely more exciting yeah. in terms of the filmmaking thing but being on a boat for two weeks and like eating black bean soup for five meals and like definitely got a little old and I was ready to get off the boat. <laughs> um, 
but like the guys I met on the boat that the fishermen were like awesome and like definitely have stories to tell hmm. about that trip for the rest of my life. Yeah. And that was actually through, do you, have you ever heard the name Henny? Yeah. So went to Essex. Henny VJ. Was like, right? yeah. Presca's like first prodigy. Yeah. That's how I got that gig actually. No way. Yeah. He was, he's like the, was like the market, not marketing, but like the content coordinator for O-Search. So Sick. he reached out, this kid from Champlain that I know actually used to film on the boat and then he couldn't. So he hmm. gave Henny my name and then, so it was like the Champlain connection and then Henny knew that I went to Essex. Hmm. So then like that connection. Gave you some credit. Yeah. I remember meeting Henny because I think he's the one who brought his red in. Yeah. Do you yes, remember that? Yes. And we all, instead of using it, just took pictures with it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what, what kind of uh, project were you creating out of that? Were you making a three minute highlight reel of the process or a full length documentary or what? So they only do like three or four expeditions a year. So part of the process was like they were filming and stuff to have enough content to put out throughout the year. Um, but then when we were to catch a shark, it would be, I would have to put out like a 30 second Instagram thing and then like a two minute long form YouTube video within three hours of them <laughs> catching the shark. So that was also like a next level logging yeah, footage wow. experience. With like all this sorting and, and like renaming so that I could go into this one big project and like I know that this row would be all the like small fishing boat. This row is this fisherman. The next row is the other fisherman. Hmm. And so it was like that allowed me like the slow time on the boat was basically logging all that footage. So when the time came, hmm. it was like download all the footage and crank out a video and it was also like there was no service 50 miles offshore. Mm -hmm. So like beforehand I had to go through all these music websites and download <laughs> oh, like a wow. hundred tracks. Cause like who knows what kind of track you're looking for, for which edit. Wow. Yeah. So it was like definitely hard of where like you couldn't, Oh, you needed this sound effect or this thing. You couldn't just like go to Google yeah, and, and it. download it. It was like you're working on your little laptop up in this boat in five foot swells, just rocking back and forth, <laughs> cranking out. And that, that alone is a challenge. I literally couldn't do it. I get too motion sick. I, I can't. It was even, tough. That's that's hard, bro. Especially looking at screens the whole time. And they want a highlight reel out in three hours. Yeah. What do you do with it if you can't upload it? So, like basically. There was a couple times where we'd catch like multiple sharks throughout the day. <laughs> so then, but you couldn't, there was an AT&T like hotspot <laughs> that you could kind of upload through. Okay. But for the most part, it was like, get the video out as soon as you can, like within that three hour window to then get reviewed by everyone on the boat. Hmm. And then they can put in their info. And then like the second you get back into service range, you're uploading. Oh, wow. So it wasn't like a super strict sure. three-hour window, but if you caught multiple sharks, like you had to be on that to get everything yeah. done. Yeah, you want to get up so that, ASAP. Right, because it was like they were basically trying to be as live as possible with not without actually going live. Dang, dude. Yeah. That's tough. It was hard. Quick turnaround. But I would man. do it again in a heartbeat if I had the time. Dude, 50 hour film contest training you, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, who do you look up to? Do you watch anybody? Do you watch anybody's work that you're just like, man? Yeah. Um, I'd say, like, right now, my top inspiration is Stepped Studios. Okay. Yep. Yeah, like old, they used to just make ski movies mm -hmm. um, and then they all got too banged up and too old to do that anymore. <laughs> so now they're doing commercial work. Yeah. 
and they do stuff for like North Face, Oakley. Um, and that's like in a perfect world where I would end up, but to yeah. get there is kind of, who knows how that'll happen. Yeah. You ever seen Evolve Studios? No. They're my all time favorites, dude. Where are they? I want to say they're based out of Nashville, but they might not be. They're what, what kind of work do they like? So they do, I believe it's two brothers who started the company. Um, but they do stuff for national geographic and, and mm. like Audi and, um, maybe not Audi, but I know they've, they've done some stuff with supercars and, um, big NFL guys. Like I'll, I'll show you, we'll watch the reel after this. Their reel okay. is like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's unbelievable. No, I'll have to check them out. They make really good stuff. Back to the beginning before you got <laughs> your first, uh, your first handy cam or before the T2I, mm -hmm. uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a professional snowboarder. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And then I kind of hit that point where I knew I wasn't like <laughs> good enough, you know? Yeah. So it was like, oh, why not document all these people that are good enough? Yeah. Did you ever do stuff with Kirk back in the day? Yeah, I, I did a lot of stuff with Kirk. I still go out to Colorado every year. You guys are still doing that trip? Yeah. Frick um, yeah, man. That's we, awesome. We've been transitioning from like resort stuff to all backcountry snowmobile access Ooh, that's dope. stuff, which is terrifying <laughs> just because of how like crazy snow is. Yeah. You mean um, like avalanches or? Yeah. yeah. Like beacons, walkie talkies, probes, shovels, shovels the whole nine yards. Um, but so that's been a blast. It's like me, Kirk's, I've met this guy, Xander through Kirk. They went to like Stratton mountain school together. Um, but so I'll go out and visit both of them and like Xander's got a sled. And so it's usually like him on hanging off one side and me hanging off the other with like a 60 pound camera pack and a tripod, <laughs> just like banching through the snow until we get to a spot. And then it's like super, super hard work in terms of getting footage. <laughs> yeah. That's um, no easy shoot because one, it takes that much time to like get somewhere, but then you also have to build a jump and then <laughs> you let it set for a few days or the landing's all powder, which is like much harder to land on than a nicely freshly packed park jump. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like a lot of work for not, it's not a little reward, but in terms of like filming in a studio or something, like you know what the outcome is going to be and you know you'll get your shot. Um, with out there, it's like, who knows what you're going to come away with. Hmm. Um, but it's a blast just like trudging through snow. Yeah. And setting up a camera and watching people huck themselves off jumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that sounds sick. When you do those trips, are you the one on the board or are you behind the camera? I'm mostly behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I usually will always like hit, I like let them get their tricks and then I'll go and hit it because I want to. Yeah, <laughs> right. <it>. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but it's mostly filming. But then, We'll, we definitely do days where like we don't bring the camera and just get out there and rip around and have fun. Just like, who knows, maybe we'll take the sled like around for 30 minutes, just turning in powder. Yeah, Dude, that's, that's the best, man. You're talking to the snowmobile king <laughs> over <laughs> yeah, here. So. We both ride. <laughs> um, but anyway, bro, thank you for doing this. Of course. I appreciate Thanks for it. having me. Where can people find you? Uh, <laughs> people can find me on Instagram, Jack Wit. VT or pop in downtown Burlington, a driven studio. I can. I'm there almost every day. And we can see your work on their website, I assume. Yeah. Sweet, man. Their Instagram or Ben and Jerry's Instagram. <laughs> or Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. <laughs> Just look at Ben and Jerry's, guys. Sweet, man. Cool. Appreciate enough. it. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah.